And now we're going to talk about blood sugar health. So let's look at that. Blood. Let's talk about that first. So we have approximately five and a half liters of blood in our body, and that's spinning around, circulating around, and it's supplying nutrients and oxygen and moving out stuff. And that's very important. But we also have some glucose in that bloodstream. Now, how much do we have? Well, I'm not going to give you the milliliters per deciliter or milligrams. I'm going to tell you in real terms, it's roughly a teaspoon of sugar. Okay. So that's not very much sugar or glucose in that five and a half liters of blood. And that's very tightly managed. We need about five grams of glucose per hour to run the brain. Strangely enough, you have about five grams of sugar in the blood at any one time. So um, this is where the myth comes in that you need to eat carbohydrates because that glucose that's in the blood can come from the liver. So that's the first thing we need to talk about. You do not need to eat carbohydrates or glucose or sugar to get blood glucose. That can come from your liver. And we know this is real and true because people who fast, they don't die. Their brain doesn't stop functioning. Okay, so if they're fasting, I fasted 72 hours a couple of months ago. I didn't feel that my brain switched off. I was still able to move and I was still able to work out. So there you go. So blood glucose is definitely made from your liver. You do not need to eat it. So we need to nail that one. That's the first thing. So secondly, we imagine a graph. And if we're really clever, I might actually put a graph up on the screen. We want our blood glucose to be pretty steady throughout the day. Now, what happens when you first wake up about four o'clock in the morning, your body is trying to wake you up, cortisol kicks in. And it does tend to give you a little rise in blood sugar just to get you out of bed. And that's often known as the dawn phenomena. But basically, we all have that. But diabetics are more aware, especially type 2 diabetics, because they are very worried and measure their blood glucose and they see that it goes up. So I'm not going to talk about levels at the moment. I want to talk about the principle of it. Okay, so. So we wake up, we might have a little bump in blood glucose, but that's okay. That's getting us out of bed. And then we start our day. Now, let's look at how you used to eat when you had, and I did too, big bowl of porridge, low fat milk, uh, freshly squeezed orange juice, maybe some blueberries, maybe some maple syrup, maybe some honey because it's healthy, because it's natural. What would happen there? Well, your blood glucose would go up quite quick. Now, that's normal. It will go up. But the way we eat nowadays and the abundance of carbohydrates and the abundance of sugar, and it's so readily available, that bump has now become a spike. Toxic levels of blood glucose. The body does not like that. So we have a big master hormone called insulin. And insulin's job literally is to take the glucose out of the blood and put it into different places in the body. So it will try your liver first, which has finite storage. Then it will try your muscles, which also have finite storage. And the only way to get it out of your blood, but keep it in your body, because your body's pretty smart. It wants to keep that energy because it never knows whether you're going to run out of food. That's how we've survived for so long. Um, it's going to put it in your fat stores. So any bit of energy that's coming in, it wants to try and store that, try and use it somewhere. So that is what insulin does. Insulin is the major hormone that takes that spike and tries to drop it. Now, because we are eating in an inappropriate way, not us carnivores, but obviously people on the standard American diet or Western diet, this spike is too much. So the pancreas has what's called a biphasic response. There's some insulin all ready to go, and that floods into the system. That really brings the blood sugar down. The second response will actually be possibly a little bit disproportionate because it's so worried about the toxic levels of sugar. So you get what's known as the sugar crash. There's probably a few people watching this going, oh, yeah, seven o'clock in the morning, eight o'clock, something like that. My cereal, my toast, my marmalade, my jam, whatever. By 11 o'clock, I'm starving. I need a snack. So this is what's happened. Your blood sugar has gone up. Insulin has brought it down, but it's brought it down so quickly you get what's called a uh, blood sugar dip or a trough, or you could even say hypoglycemic. Hypo means anything low and hyper means anything above the normal. So you get this uh, plummet and then you have to have a snack to bring your blood glucose back up. Now, if your snack of choice is, for instance, um, we call them crisps in the UK, you call them chips. If, if you have like a donut, you have a sugary snack, uh, a soda, something like that, you're going to go straight back up into shooting your blood glucose up and you repeat ad finitum. So 
This is where the eating little and often doesn't really work because you are constantly telling your pancreas to, to produce insulin. So we've got blood. We've talked about five and a half liters of blood. We've talked about sugar, but we tend to talk about blood glucose. And now we're going to talk about health. Well, the health part of it is stopping those spikes and stopping those troughs. So we don't want it going up and down like a big roller coaster. We want to try and level it out. Yes, a little bump is okay. A little dip is okay. And this is where carnivore is really good. Because when you look at the macronutrients, the biggest response you get from your pancreas and the, uh, the insulin response is from carbohydrates. It's much higher. It's more rapid. It's more of a spike. And it does start to drop down. Protein, well, that doesn't spike the insulin as much. It still has a little uh, response. Insulin isn't bad. Um, it's elevated levels of insulin that are bad. You need insulin, so you need a little bit of a bump from the from the protein. And then fat has a very nominal effect on insulin, but you still get a, sm a small effect. Protein runs for a bit longer with that insulin response than it does carbohydrates, and fats run even longer. But when you look at the graph, which I definitely will put behind me here, you will see the reaction. Now, there are a couple of nuances here that we are going to let you into, but there is a big response to blood glucose, and this is what all influencers talk about. Your blood glucose goes up and your insulin goes up, but that actually isn't the story. That's not really the whole story. And I'm going to tell you about an experiment. What they did was they um, had some patients that were allowed to eat carbohydrates or eat, and others had it injected directly into their bloodstream. And they looked at the insulin response. And they were very surprised to find that those that were eating the carbohydrates had a much higher insulin response. And there's a big reason for that. So what happens when you eat your food is broken down. It goes into your stomach. So the food is broken down. Mainly, mainly carbohydrates are broken down uh, with the mechanical digestion and obviously your meats and uh, fats as well. But that's mainly for carbohydrates. Then your stomach has stomach acid, which breaks down mainly proteins. It does the other bits. So its biggest job is, is protein uh, breakdown. Also attacking pathogens. So that's why you need an acidic stomach. We'll come to that. But And then what happens is it enters your small intestine, and that's where a lot of the fat absorption goes. But the other thing that happens in your first kink of your small intestine, there's what's called the brush border, and you have K and L cells in the first and second kinks. And these cells detect sugar and glucose. And you have what's called incretine hormones or incretin hormones, depending on where you live. And they go and talk to the pancreas and they tell the pancreas to release insulin. So it isn't actually your blood glucose going up that spikes a pancreas and makes insulin come out. We, although it does a little bit when you infuse it directly into the uh, bloodstream, it is actually the ingestion and going into the stomach. And you get the incretin effect. So if you've never even heard of incretin hormones, well, there you are. You know now this is proven, absolutely. Uh, and you can search it on the internet and you will find out that there is information out there, but it's, it's buried pretty much. But it's very interesting because this is why we talk about the GI tract and how important that is with blood glucose management. Now, just imagine if you're inflamed, picking up from the last video and your small intestine is leaky or there's damage there, then your response is going to be uh, dysfunctional, isn't it? Because you have these cells in the lining of your small intestine, which are really the gatekeepers of your blood glucose, actually, from the incoming food. And if they are swollen, if they're damaged, then you're going to get sort of a, a, a disproportionate response. So that's basically the whole three words looked at. Blood, we talked about how much you have, glucose, sugar, blood sugar, and the health, why this way of eating is going to improve your health. So the health of your gut can have an impact on your glucose management and your insulin response? Stephen, is that right? That's exactly right, because if your insulin response is inappropriate, then that blood glucose might be slightly higher because of damage to your small intestine or to the K and L cells, might be slightly higher because it's not signaling with via the incretin hormones to the pancreas to release the right amount of insulin. So there's, so there's so much nuance to this. You need to fix your gut. I mean, that we say that, but people say, well, what does that actually mean? Well, we want to make the gut tight. We don't want to make it leaky. That's the first thing. We don't want it inflamed. We want it to be um, 
hydrated to the right amount. And, but we also want that all the cells that are, are signaling and, and picking up what's going on and going into your body, we want them to be optimal. So when we eat this way, we're not uh, firstly flooding the system with refined carbohydrates and really overloading the system. And secondly, we're including foods that will improve the health of your stomach and your stomach acid, improve the uh, lining of your small intestine by bringing down the inflammation and also giving it the nutrients to rebuild it properly. The inside of your stomach does rebuild entirely every four days. Cells, because there's so much um, friction and heat and mechanical um, activity, the small intestine loses a lot of cells. There's cell damage. So that constantly is rebuilding, which is why when you have gut problems, and we've definitely gone off blood sugar health a little bit, but that's okay. Um, when you have gut problems, they can become very, very difficult to fix. But this way of eating gives you the building blocks to actually get back into fixing it and also um, lessen the stress on that area with less carbohydrates, less glucose causing problems. So there is less glucose, less water, less damage. I mean, also when you've got glucose, every single glucose molecule will have three molecules of water. So that will inflame the area. If you can imagine just hanging on to more and more water, that has a big effect on the electrolytes. But yeah, absolutely what you're saying is is, is correct because when we go this to this way of eating, we're taking out the carbohydrates, taking out the glucose molecules, losing water retention, improving our electrolyte and fluid balance. So it has so many tick boxes that are really good. And, and that is why. In the real world, when we get people doing uh, low carb and keto and then carnivore, they are really surprised that their gut health seems to improve and improve and improve even more when they take more and more carbohydrates out. 